Before we get into the stories, make sure you check out Donovan Dread Discovers, where I go over strange and weird videos from around the world. I release several times a week. Also, sign up for the weekly email at dreadsarmy.com so you don't miss any updates. I'm a retired covert operative. A few years back, I was part of a task force deployed along Somalia's coast. Not a vacation spot by any stretch. The land was arid and the heat blistering. It was hostile territory. Unpredictable danger lurking around every corner. You don't quite know fear until you've been sent to operate in a place where every footstep could mean the difference between life and death. When the mission details came, I had a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach. But, as an operative, your job is to deal with the cards you've been dealt. Our task was simple on paper. Intel suggested there was an illegal arms cache in an isolated location away from the populated areas, hidden within some remote coastal cliffs. Our job was to get in, gather photographic evidence, get out, and get that evidence back to HQ. Easy enough, right? Our first night, we moved like ghosts, hugging the rugged coastline. The moon was a thin crescent, casting long, eerie shadows across the landscape. It wasn't enough light to see by, but we couldn't use any artificial light for fear of being discovered. We had to navigate around the watchful eyes of hostile patrols and the treacherous cliffs in the dark. Our second day was spent holed up in an abandoned fisherman's hut by the sea, waiting for the cover of night again. The heat was punishing, the silence deafening, the stench of salt water, Decaying seaweed and dried fish guts was a constant reminder of our less than desirable accommodations. It didn't take long for me to notice something off. I brushed it off as just mission anxiety playing tricks on my mind. But then, there was a distinct smell that slowly seeped through our shelter. It was pungent, like wet dog, only amplified tenfold. It got stronger as the day went on. Whatever we did, we couldn't escape it. Around dusk, as I stepped out to relieve myself, the smell was almost unbearable. It was then I heard something that sent electric shocks through my arms and legs, a sound that still haunts me to this day. Even though it wasn't anything menacing at that moment, just a faint whooping sound in the distance. It was oddly out of place in the otherwise silent landscape. With the arrival of night, we resumed our mission, making steady progress through the labyrinth of cliffs and caves. I couldn't shake off the unsettling feeling of being watched, and the recurring whoops reverberating through the wind made it increasingly worse. We all looked at each other when we heard the noises, but nobody said anything. We had a mission to complete, and we couldn't be distracted by some strange animal in the night. Somewhere around midnight, as we navigated around a particularly unforgiving cliff, we had our first encounter with the creature. A shadowy figure stood tall against the stars on a nearby ridge. It was massive, its hulking silhouette hazy in the faint moonlight. While it was far off, I could still make out its small, beady eyes. They seemed to glow in the darkness. My every instinct was screaming danger, but the figure was far off, and not directly in our path. So we moved on. We all saw it, but no one wanted to admit what we thought we were looking at. The beast was big, much bigger than any human or local wildlife that we knew existed in that area. However, it stood upright like a man, and yet, we could all see that the creature was covered in thick hair all over its body. We knew where our mission lay, and an encounter with an unidentified creature was not part of the plan. We would have time to discuss our thoughts later, for now we had to keep moving. We took a path that avoided the creature and went on our way. As we moved cautiously away from the figure on the ridge, the smell grew stronger and the peculiar whooping sound fell quiet. My mind raced, aligning all the weird instances we'd encountered since our arrival. I was sure they were all connected to the creature, suddenly overrun with adrenaline and alertness. Every sound, every shadow, seemed to magnify in the desolate landscape. We reached a narrow path, a steep cliff to our left, in a ravine to our right. The wind whistled, carrying the putrid smell stronger than before. I had a feeling of being watched, and I knew deep down that the creature was getting close now, too close for comfort. 
Suddenly, a hair-raising growl echoed through the night. It sounded primeval, prowling on the edges of human comprehension. Its raw power, the untamed savagery behind it, shook me to my core. I feel the memories echoing even now as I recall everything. In the faint moonlight, I saw it, up close this time. Was this the same creature we all saw on the ridge earlier in the night? Or were there several of these things? These were questions I wasn't sure I wanted answers to. The beast was massive and hulking against the cliffside, at least 12 feet tall if I had to guess. It was covered from head to toe in long, reddish-brown hair. It stood hunched over a carcass, and we likely interrupted its evening meal. I was sure this was a different individual from the one we saw earlier. But that begs the question, how many more of these things are out here? It turned its cone-shaped head toward us. The small, beady eyes glowed ominously in the pale moonlight. Its face almost resembled that of a caveman. The skin appeared darker and hairless compared to the rest of its body. As the moonlight glinted off its large chest and wide shoulders, I clicked my throat mic for backup, our only chance of escape. In an unvoiced agreement, my crew slowly began to retreat, each step painstakingly calculated to avoid alerting the monster. I kept my eyes glued onto its moving silhouette, my hand closing over the cool handle of my sidearm. Even as we moved further away, every instinct screamed to run, but our training kept us rooted. With the incessant growling still echoing in the wind, we somehow moved out of sight, taking cover behind a cluster of boulders. We held our breath, hearts racing and eyes straining in the dark for the beast's silhouette. Minutes turned into hours before the chilling sounds slowly died out, swallowed by the tidal waves crashing against the rocky cliffside. We only had a few moments to rest and catch our breaths before we continued our mission. We managed to gather our evidence, holstered our weapons, and called in an immediate extraction. The familiar growl of our extraction chopper dulled the edge of fear that had grown sharper with each passing moment. Once aboard, I stole a final glance down at the moonlit cliffs. The sinking feeling in my gut hadn't dissipated, but mingled with a dash of relief. I looked back at my team, our unspoken camaraderie echoing in our mutual sigh of relief, though some attributed the creature to being nothing more than a concoction of tired minds and night shadows. I knew what we saw was real. We all saw it. The question of its existence, its purpose, and its place in our world gnawed at me making me question our understanding of the natural world. My encounter with what I now identify as the Sasquatch remains one of the most unexplainable experiences of my life. I thought I might share a peculiar event I had while on duty a couple of years back. This was near the end of fall when the nights are starting to get a chill to them and I was still working the graveyard shift as a responding officer out here in Lafayette, Louisiana. Now, as for Lafayette, it's got its fair share of eccentricities, but what place doesn't have its own batch of local lore and spooky happenings? I've had more than my fair share of weird calls in the city, but this one I'm about to tell you stands out a bit more than the rest. I still don't have a solid explanation for it. I got a call mid-shift, a complaint from some distressed folks living out near the swamps. They claimed they were hearing some bizarre and loud noises in the dead of the night. I remember thinking about it for a moment, listening to the dispatcher relay the details. It sounded like a wildlife issue, if I'm honest, which wasn't really my area of expertise. But it was a slow night, so I decided to make the drive out and see if I could figure out what was going on. The swamp's a lively place at night, filled with all sorts of critters making a commotion. I was betting the caller was new to the area and just wasn't used to our brand of wilderness yet. While en route, I recall this distinct eeriness crawling up my spine. It was a strange, unexplainable unease that I attributed to the late hour and my excessive use of caffeine that night. If you've never lived in the South, I can tell you that swamps have an old kind of silent magic about them during the daytime. And at night, well, that magic can turn a touch creepy. But, my mom always told me, ain't no spooks or spirits to be afraid of in this world. You need to only fear the living. The night was unusually quiet, 
Even the chatter in the police radio seemed oddly soft as I neared the vicinity. Turning off the main road and onto a lesser used dirt path leading towards the house, the rich, earthy smell of swamp mud and moss drifted into the patrol car. I took a look around when I arrived, casting my car's headlights in the beam from my flashlight over the swamp that stretched out around the property. I didn't see signs of anything out of place, but that didn't mean much. The swamp can hide a great many things when it wants to. I walked up to the house, knocked on the door. The homeowner was a jittery old man who looked like he was seeing ghosts. He said the noises came every other night, like a soft hush that grew into a loud wail, ending always in a frantic splash in the waters. It sure seemed like some wild animal to me. I kept my patrol car parked close by, and I ventured on foot to the swamp edge, being careful not to tread onto anything unfriendly. I shone the flashlight up into the trees, looking for any signs that pointed to what might be causing this ruckus. The light bounced off the thick veil of Spanish moss from the sprawling oak branches, casting eerie shadows. My ears strained for any significant sounds over the echoing chorus of crickets, frogs, and the gentle whispers of the night breeze. The swamp was alive, but tranquility can sometimes be eerily unsettling. Something about the air felt different, but I brushed it off, reckoning it was just the quiet of the night playing tricks with my mind. I kept moving further along the swamp edge, the beam of the flashlight acting as my guide in the darkness. I took slow steps, staying vigilant and listening intensely. This was swampland after all. Any wrong step could take you knee deep into marsh or worse, bring you face to face with a gator. Halfway through my perimeter check, I noticed something that made me stop dead in my tracks. As the light hit the swamp's edge, I saw something that made my heart race. Suddenly, contrasted against the darkness of the bushes, I saw this large, moving shadow, darker than the night around it. The sight was unsettling, and something inside me screamed that this was no normal swamp critter. There was a rustle, a displacement of air, and then this low hum started emanating from the shadow, almost like a low frequency that you could feel in your chest more than you could hear with your ears. Pulling my gun out of the holster, I had to fight to keep my hand steady adrenaline preparing my body for a fight or flight response. Then, all of a sudden, the thing stepped out of the foliage. I saw what looked like a human body, but with disproportionately long limbs. It stood roughly five to six feet tall. I damn near had a heart attack right there and then. Worse still, the creature had these large bat-like wings that seemed to sprout from its back, like oversized umbrellas, almost the size of its body. It was as black as night and covered in what looked like feathers. Its head was very small compared to its body and lacked a face, except for two large, red, glowing eyes. Reality seemed to blur around the edges, and I could hardly believe what I was seeing. I took a step back, but stumbled over a root, landing hard on my back with a grunt. The flashlight slipped out of my hand, casting a spectral pattern onto the leaves overhead. Seeing me on the ground, the creature turned and with one swift motion uncoiled its wings and leapt into the sky. The force of its departure caused the trees around to shudder. I swear they lost leaves in its wake. I scrambled back to my feet. Filled with a mix of terror and astonishment, I backed away from the swamp, back to the safety of my patrol car, and I left without even telling the property owner. Back at the precinct, I recounted the night's episode. Of course, folks ribbed me, made jokes about me seeing swamp spirits, but I know what I saw. The swamps filled with more than gators and snakes, that's for sure. And the old man. I heard that he moved out of his house a week later, sold the property, and got the hell away from the swamps. Can't say I blame him either. My nights patrolling near the swamp have been different. The silence feels heavier, the darkness somehow darker. The swamp is no longer just an ever-changing body of land, but now something that is masking the unknown and the unseen. Every hoot, every splash takes me back to that bewildering encounter. It didn't take long for word to spread in the small town, and soon, folks began whispering about the creature of Lafayette. A strange satisfaction washed over me that I wasn't the only one to have seen it.
This happened only a few months ago. I work as a forest ranger in the heart of Olympic National Park in Washington State. I'm definitely one who will go for the serene call of the wild any day, so this was the perfect job for me, and I know the area pretty well here. So, when something out of the ordinary happens, you know I'll notice it. My days in the park usually start off the same way. I grab a breakfast of oatmeal and coffee, and then I'm off patrolling. The park is a magnificent place, so it doesn't even feel like a job most days. Now, in my 15 years here, I've encountered all sorts of wildlife. But what I saw that day, it's something that doesn't exactly fit into one of Mother Nature's brochures. I was carrying out a routine surveillance deep in the forest area. We'd been tracking an unusually large pack of coyotes for a while now. They were an anomaly in the area and were causing a bit of disruption. My job was to monitor their movements and try to keep the human-wildlife interactions to a minimum for the safety of everyone involved. I was tailing this old logging trail they'd used the previous night. Everything looked exactly as you'd expect. There were fresh paw marks, a few scraps of a recent kill. Looks like they had a couple of rabbits the night before. All normal stuff there. But as I ventured deeper, I started to notice something rather strange. The previously vibrant wildlife seemed to have gone into hiding. No bird calls, no sounds of squirrels scrambling up and down the trees. Even the rustle of the leaves, it all just ceased. I know you're thinking that well. Maybe it was just a quiet day. But trust me, something felt wrong. Let's just say, when you've spent enough time in the woods, you develop a gut feeling about these things. As I inched forward, it gradually started to get harder to breathe. A stench started to permeate the air, like a rotting carcass. But there was something more to it, something I couldn't quite place. I've smelled a lot of things in the woods, including the aftermath of a bear kill, but this odor was odd. It almost had me gagging. I thought I'd caught the trail leading to the source of the wretched smell, and was about to begin following it when a strange sound caught me off guard. I wasn't quite sure what it was at first, but then I realized it was a growl. There was something out here with me, and from the sounds of it, it didn't want me there. I started to back away slowly. I didn't want to turn and run in case it triggered this creature's instinct to chase me. I didn't know what it was then, but I wasn't about to take a gamble that I could outrun it. I was almost back to my truck and about to breathe a sigh of relief when I saw it. It had followed me out and I hadn't heard it trailing me at all. Not for a moment. The creature somehow managed to move silently through the forest without me noticing. That alone almost scared me more than the creature I saw standing before me. And that's saying a lot, because what I was looking at was something so unbelievably terrifying that it belongs in someone's nightmares. It stood on two legs, just like a man, but at an impossible height of seven feet or more. It was covered in dark, wet-looking hair, like it had some layer of slime of grease on its body. It had a broad chest and wide shoulders. I could make out a massive mane draped around its neck, reminiscent of a cape. Even putting the nauseating stench aside, it was downright demonic looking. It had a terrifyingly long snout, and I could have sworn it had a double row of teeth that almost glowed in the low light. It was like some grotesque, Frankenstein-like mixture of a man and a wolf. It saw me looking at it, and it dropped down to four legs. And somehow, in that position, it was even more terrifying. One bounding leap and it would be on top of me. I knew that much. Our eyes locked. I drew my sidearm, not taking my eyes off the creature. The tension was palpable between us. As it stared back at me, I managed to hold back my fear. I had my gun held steady on it. And then, just like that, it turned and disappeared into the brush. It was as if the creature knew the gun made us equals and decided not to pursue me. But how could an animal know that? Whatever this thing was, it was far too intelligent for its own good. For a few moments, I stood rooted to the spot, staring at the place where the creature had vanished. I didn't know what to think. That night, back in my cabin, the woods didn't seem so familiar anymore. I questioned every rustling leaf, every distant howl, wondering if there were any more of those creatures out there. Now, you may think I'm off my rocker, or it was a trick of the low light, but I assure you, I know what I saw. My world was turned sideways for a bit, and I revisited that site almost every day since. 
looking for more traces of that creature. I think at this point I've just accepted that it lives out there. I don't like to think about it too much anymore beyond that. Sometimes strange things happen in the most mundane situations. I'm a plumber by trade, but also an avid outdoorsman. This strange episode of mine happened last summer. I'd taken a week off from the usual leaks and clogs of life to travel out west a bit. I decided to visit Bryce Canyon National Park. I'd heard a lot about it, but had never been there before. The moment I got there, I was entranced by those red rock formations and surreal alien landscapes. I was ready for some refreshing outdoor adventures, but it seems fate had another thing in mind for me that day. I decided to hike on the Navajo Loop and Queen's Garden Trail when I got there. It was argued to be one of the best ways to see Bryce. It supposedly featured a tour of the more dramatic hoodoos, the passages through the canyon walls, and the natural amphitheater that truly brings out the magic hidden within the canyon. Plus, there was a place named Wall Street, and that one made me chuckle a bit. Just the kind of humor Mother Nature has. That's where things got a little strange. As I descended into Wall Street, the rays of the sun weren't as unforgiving. Towering rocks shielded me and made the air cooler. The echo of my footsteps just bounced off the walls. The tall, narrow walls of the canyon created a sort of eerie ambience. It felt like being on a totally different planet. And then, out of nowhere, I heard a low, growl-like sound resonating off the stone walls. It sounded like it could have been a ways off, but the echo made it tough to tell. My first thought was, great, I'm about to meet a bear. I paused and surveyed my surroundings, seeing nothing but the towering rocks and the shadows they cast on the canyon floor. Moisture clung to the cool walls of the gorge, and a smell started to permeate the air. I can only liken it to the scent of damp fur a rather pungent odor like a wet dog that's been out in a swamp all day. A smell that felt out of place within the arid, sun-soaked formations of Bryce. I dismissed it as the musk of some local wildlife, and that was that, or so I thought. As the day moved on, the shadows in the DCA areas of the trail started getting longer. I brushed off my unease as a mere psychological trick nature was playing on me, and yet, I couldn't shake the sensation I had of being watched, even followed. But being an avid hiker, I knew Mother Nature was not all majestic views and peaceful environments. That smell of wet fur and rotting garbage grew even stronger. It seemed to follow me along my path, and that eerie feeling of being watched just wouldn't go away either. The hair at the back of my neck pricked up harder than before, and the strange growling now a weird combination of low grunts and occasional whooping noises, continued echoing through the canyon. I knew something was wrong, but where was I supposed to go? I couldn't pinpoint the location of the vocalizations. I could either keep moving forward or go back. I chose to keep walking. Not a moment later, I saw movement further up the trail. Swiveling around, I squinted my eyes over the path. The dense shadow of the towering hoodoos made it almost impossible to discern anything. Against my better judgment, I decided to follow the creature. As I stepped gingerly over the rocky path, my heart pounded in my chest. Suddenly, a large form materialized from the shadowy depths of the canyon. When I say large, I mean huge, at least nine or ten feet tall. It was covered from head to toe in thick, shaggy hair. The hair was an odd mix of reddish and light brown almost making the creature blend right in with the background. I know how this is going to sound, but the creature was literally some sort of bipedal ape. It moved with surprising grace, despite its hulking body. In shock, I let out an involuntary gasp, my flashlight's beam trembling before it landed on its face. The light revealed an uncannily human-like face. Its head was somewhat cone-shaped with a sturdy brow ridge. A pair of beady black eyes glared back at me. The face itself was fascinating. At least to me, it had an almost primitive Neanderthal look to it. It was like I was looking at some missing link in the evolution of man. I stood there frozen, watching the creature watch me. Then, it suddenly let out a loud, yelping growl. I swear I'd never heard anything like that before. I guess it could have been fear or nerves or both but I had the sudden instinct to turn tail and run. 
Judging by the creature's noises, I don't think it wanted me there. So I did just that. I ran. I sprinted as fast as I could all the way back to the parking lot. Finally reaching my car, I slammed the door shut and took off. The next day, I returned to the trail, half expecting it to have been nothing more than a nightmarish figment of my imagination. But when I saw the disturbed foliage and now dried, large, unrecognizable footprints imprinted in the damp earth of yesterday's trail, I knew better, call it what you will, Sasquatch, Bigfoot, or perhaps some unidentified species of desert ape. Whatever its true identity, I know now that there are mysteries in the wilderness that we might not ever find answers to. I was always skeptical of these types of tall tales until it happened to me. Whether you believe me or not, you better be prepared for anything if you set food into the wild. It's their territory, not ours, and we do best to remember that. Living on the outskirts of Anchorage definitely has its quirks. There are some odd folks up here, and that's not the least of it. This particular series of events happened a few winters back. Now, I don't live up there anymore, but back then, I found myself out in the sticks looking into something a bit off-kilter. I had a little cabin out in the middle of nowhere that operated mostly off-grid. The seclusion was pretty enticing to me, but the job opportunities weren't very plentiful. I found myself working as a general handyman for the people in the community. I had a bit of experience working in plumbing and electrical. No formal schooling or anything like that. Just on-the-job training. It wasn't much, but it was good enough to get the job done. Life as a tradesman can lead you down some strange roads and into some even stranger homes. Now don't get me wrong, most days were pretty typical. You've got leaky faucets, clogged toilets, dripping showers, the usual stuff. But every once in a while you find yourself in a sticky situation. On this particular day, I was called to investigate an unknown disturbance. Not my usual gig, but I needed the work. I'd been hearing vague stories from the people around town. Nothing concrete, but they were talking about weird noises that couldn't be explained and sudden, off-putting smells. Just bizarre happenings in the area just outside of town. I arrived at the house and nothing appeared out of place, but there was an uncanny silence in the air. I don't remember hearing any bird song, squirrel chatter, or even the wind blowing through the barren trees. There was just nothing. It's not like we were in a bustling city by any means, but the forest usually has some noise to it. Of course, winter made everything a bit quieter, but still, it shouldn't have been that quiet. I began making my way around the property, noting any signs or clues of strange goings on. There were strange marks in the underbrush, like something had been plowing through the foliage. Whatever it was, it must have been big. It was too late in the season to be a bear, maybe a moose, I saw some disturbances in the snow. It was odd to say the least. If you've ever been around horses, you'll know they like to roll in the dirt and in the snow. The area was padded down and marked up just like that. Like a horse, or something the size of a horse, had been rolling there. Again, I figured it was a moose. I'd never seen moose roll in the snow like that, but I suppose they could have. I examined the area for tracks. The creature that had been here must have left footprints behind. The tracks were deep in the snow and hard to identify, but they looked canine in nature. A wolf, perhaps? That didn't make sense at all. The creature laying here in the snow was, at minimum, the size of a grown horse. It couldn't be a wolf. Out of nowhere, I heard something in the forest behind me. It sounded like some sort of growling animal. Maybe it was a wolf. And then I was hit by the smell. It was like a mix of wet dog and something rotten, like old garbage. I can still remember the raw stink of it. It was utterly gut-churning. Whatever I was investigating, this was definitely the thing I had been hearing about around town. Something was off. I knew that much. I didn't know what I was walking into or what I would find. But I knew, deep in the pit of my stomach, that this was not going to be an ordinary job. Little did I know just how far from ordinary it would turn out to be. I heard something moving again behind me. I hit the ground instinctively, hiding behind the closest tree. My pulse was deafening in the silence, 
as I dared to take a peek. There was something there, just beyond the edge of the wood. It was something big. That's all I could tell from my current vantage point. I crawled along the ground to find cover in another grove of trees, where I could get a better look at the unknown beast. As I looked closer, I could make out a large silhouette standing upright. I could see the dim outline of its form against the snow-covered backdrop. It was about seven to nine feet tall and stood up like a man. But it wasn't a man. It had massive wide shoulders and appeared to have a humped back. It looked like something out of a horror flick. The head almost looked hyena-like, with pointy ears and a long snout. It was definitely canine, but it didn't have the long, tapered snout of a wolf. It was almost like that of a bear, a bear mixed with a wolf. Before I could think about it too much, the creature let out a low growl, primal and guttural. I've never heard anything like it before. Whatever this thing was, it was way above my pay grade. All I wanted to do was get out of there. I managed to back away slowly, hoping the creature wouldn't notice me. I knew running might trigger a chase, and I was certain I wouldn't be able to outrun that thing. Ever so carefully, I silently put one foot behind the other, never taking my eyes off the creature. It felt like ages before I finally got far enough away to slip into a full sprint back to my truck. I never looked back, never paused. I just ran. Even in the safety of my vehicle, I struggled to make sense of the encounter. Maybe I had been out in the cold for too long, or my mind was playing tricks. But I couldn't deny what I saw or the fear that had gripped me. Later on, as I sat in my living room trying to process everything, I found myself unable to shake off the chill from the encounter. I reached for my phone, scrolling through possible wildlife around the Anchorage area. Wolves, bears, even Bigfoot. None of the creatures matched my encounter. What the hell was that out there? Was it something known? I even flirted with the idea that it was someone in a costume scaring people off the land, or perhaps an undiscovered creature. Nothing made sense. For a while, I thought I was going crazy. But then, what about all those other people who had seen the creature, heard it in the forest at night, and smelled that stench of rotten dog alone in the woods? What about them? Were they all crazy too? Or perhaps there is something else out there, more terrifying than any of us want to admit. 